Hello everybody, I'm Tim Eister, and again, I am collaborating with Paradox Interactive to bring you, yet again, another tutorial. In this tutorial, I'll be glossing over how to maximize your city's economy using features like specialized industry, and how to plan for future development. Your city cannot function without a healthy economy, so it's super important to balance your budget and to maintain a positive cash flow as often as possible. Your city primarily gets money by collecting taxes from residents and businesses, as well as from service fees. In your economy window, you can raise or lower taxes for each zone type, or you can be more granular by adjusting taxes based on your citizens' education level or on the sale of specific goods and services. Raising taxes can generate some extra income for your city, but be careful not to raise them too high as your citizens will begin to complain and businesses will suffer. Lowering your taxes, on the other hand, can allow business profitability to rise, thus increasing their building level sooner, which could pay off in the long run for your economy. Always keep an eye on your chirper feed to see what people are saying about their economic situation. Building specialized industry zones are a fantastic way of generating more tax revenue, but it will also help businesses by reducing importation costs for raw materials, thus improving their profitability. Commercial and industrial businesses will use the needed raw materials produced by your specialized industry zones, and excess will automatically be exported which can earn you some extra income. Depending on what map you choose, some natural resources might be a little more scarce and may be located far from your city. This is not a problem as in City Skylines 2, you're able to purchase tiles anywhere on your map to give you access to your desired resource. This is a good opportunity to build new satellite towns on the outskirts of your map which are based around the specialized industry in the area. There's many different types of specialized industry from mining to agriculture to forestry, each requiring their own natural resources. Forestry, for example, is dependent on forest age and density. In other words, the more big trees there are, the more wood your forestry industry will produce, the more money you'll make. New forests can actually be planted by selecting the tree brush tool from your landscaping menu. However, keep in mind that trees take a very long time to grow to a mature size. This can take literal years in game time. You'll also notice this when looking at older parts of your city where trees have grown to a much larger size than in the newer outskirts of your city. It's also worth noting that trees will change color as you switch seasons. This can make for some very picturesque photo ops using the new photo mode. If your satellite city grows to a large enough size, begin placing services like schools and hospitals, then create an operating district to encapsulate your essential services inside the town area. This will ensure your services are limited to the town's borders. You can also enact policies for each district. Furthermore, you're also able to export electricity, water and sewage, which can also generate some extra income. For example, the surplus electricity produced by power plants will automatically be sold to outside cities for a fee. However, make sure to have proper outside connections to be able to export your goods. Simply drag roads or power lines to the very edge of the map to create an outside connection. You can also create outside connections using your public transportation routes by dragging them to the very edge of the map. This will provide alternative entry points into your city. Which leads me to my next topic, tourism. Making your city accessible and attracting tourists to your city is an excellent way to not only boost your economy, but your citizens' overall happiness which is equally as important. By placing parks and eventually tourist attractions, your city's attractiveness will bring in tourists from your outside connections into your city. These tourists will stay a few nights at hotels and spend money at various businesses across town. The more parks and attractions your city has, the more tourists you will attract, and the more money you will make. In addition, aim for unlocking signature buildings as your city grows. Signature buildings are special unique buildings that grant XP awards and provide various benefits to their surroundings, which can include economic benefits as well. They can also help give your city a unique look. Keep in mind that there is a North American and a European set of signature buildings. Each building has a specific criteria for unlocking. Now, back to economics. Your service budgets can be adjusted under the service tab in the economy window. Be sure to read carefully how raising or lowering each budget will affect your city. This can sometimes be a good way to save some money if you're in a pinch. Or you may want to take out a loan. Worst case scenario, you'll always have government subsidies propping up your city just in case things aren't going so good. Government subsidies will automatically be granted to you if your city is not in the best economical situation. But City Skylines is not all about money and numbers. 
It's also about expressing your creativity and building the city of your dreams, whatever that may look like. This brings me to my final talking point, planning for future development. No matter what stage your city is in, you'll always need to plan your next move. The best advice I can give is regularly check your info views to see important city information. This can help you decide what your city needs next and can help you avoid any unwanted surprises. When expanding your city outwards, study the terrain around you to make sure the topography can support a new neighborhood. Opening your landscaping menu will show you contour lines which could be useful. It may reveal the land you plan to build on isn't quite as flat as you may have thought. If you're aiming for realism, spend some time looking at satellite imagery of real cities around the world. In any case, it's totally up to you what kind of city you want to build. And with that, this will conclude my tutorial on how to play your city. I hope you found it useful and informative, and if so, be sure to subscribe to the City Skylines channel to get notified of future videos. Thank you so much for watching, and take care everyone.